What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again and today we're going to be checking out Manjaro Linux on the all new Orange Pi 800. Now some of you might not be familiar with this device but uh, basically they did take a lot from the Raspberry Pi 400 but when it comes down to it it does have a more powerful CPU plus we have internal eMMC storage it's soldered to the board. We've got 64 gigabytes of that. We can also boot from an SD card if you want to, and it's capable of running Linux or Android. But at the time of making this video, the Android image isn't quite ready yet. I will be doing some testing once it's released. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I've already made one video kind of taking a look at this in its stock form factor with the stock operating system. I'll leave a link there in the description. We also did a tear down and kind of compared it to the Raspberry Pi 400. But for this video, we're going to be running Manjaro Linux. And uh, when it comes down to it, this is definitely one of my favorite distros on x86 or ARM. And with the SOC the Orange Pi 800 is using, Manjaro has actually been available for that chipset for a while now. So we already have some really great optimizations, at least for the CPU. And Orange Pi offers an image that we can run from a micro SD card. So real quick, here's a rundown. As you can see on the rear of this unit, we've got one USB 2.0 port, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, our micro SD card slot, full size HDMI, VGA, and USB type C power in. This also includes a mono speaker built into the unit. So if you don't have speakers on your display, then you got a little bit of sound out. And when it comes to the specs of the Pi 800 for the CPU, it's using the Rockchip RK3399. This is a six core CPU. We've got two A72 cores at 1.8 gigahertz and four A53 cores at 1.4. It's got a Mali T860 MP4 GPU. 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal eMMC storage plus we've got micro SD card support. It also has dual band AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. We've taken a look at the ports on this unit and now it's time to get into a little bit of testing. Like I mentioned if you're interested in checking out my first video I'll leave a link in the description. With that this does come pre-installed with Orange Pi OS. Not a bad operating system but I was really itching to test out Manjaro. Okay, so here it is. Like I mentioned, this is running from a micro SD card. I really wish that I could get this to install to the eMMC, but uh, you know, right now it's still a bit early. Hopefully down the road, we do get an eMMC compatible image. And basically the way those are set up, you do flash it to an SD card, but it'll automatically install to the internal storage. That way we don't have to mess around with anything and just get it up and running on that faster storage. But for now, we'll test it out from the SD and I'm just going through the initial setup real quick. I also need to do some updating and install some applications. So I'll be right back. So yeah, it's a lot snappier than I thought it would be from the SD card. Uh, actually pretty impressed here. Not bad at all. And when it comes to video playback, uh, we know this RK3399 in Linux doesn't do a great job with 4K. But with this setup here, I'm getting decent 720 and 1080p 60 playback out of this little machine. Just ran NeoFetch so we could take a look at everything. So this is the stock image you can download from Orange Pi's website for the Pi 800. We're on kernel 5.18.5 with the XFCE desktop. Now that's just going to kind of speed everything up on an ARM device. Manjaro does offer prettier versions, but we don't have one right now for the Pi 800, like something with Plasma installed. I don't know how well it would perform, and to tell you the truth, if they did have it, I probably just would have went with XFCE in the first place. There's definitely a few things I want to test out in this video. We're going to check out a little bit of video playback from YouTube. We'll use Firefox. That's the one that's pre-installed. You could go with Chromium if you want to. And if you're not familiar with Manjaro, it's actually a really user-friendly operating system. We do have this add and remove program section, so we can go right in here and download thousands of different applications that'll work with Linux. And since we're on an ARM version of Manjaro, all of this stuff is kind of curated, so it will work on ARM devices. Now, how well it runs is really down to the chipset we're using, but I'm going to jump into some testing. So I just went through and updated everything. I've also plugged in Ethernet. We've got Wi-Fi on this, and it does work in Manjaro. I just personally like using Ethernet, so I've got mine plugged in right here. But yeah, I mean, I was actually really impressed with the web browsing and video playback that this thing can do. Now, the RK3399 has been on the market for a couple of years, and developers have had a lot of time to kind of mess around with it and optimize different operating systems for it. 
And when it comes to desktop performance with this SOC, this is some of the best that I've seen, and it really comes down to the software. After all, we're using basically the same hardware we were a couple years ago, that RK3399. And in the past, through all of my testing, I've always had much better performance in gaming and video playback with Android versus a desktop Linux operating system. But this is catching up. Now, it's definitely not there yet. I still get much better performance out of Android, especially with 4K video playback. But as you can see, I mean, this is breezing through web browsing. We can head right over here to YouTube. So the overall user experience with this chip is definitely improved. And I wouldn't mind using this, you know, as just a little web browsing desktop, email checker, maybe a little document editing. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. We'll turn stats for nerds on. And we're going to test this at 4K at first. I just want to show you what kind of performance we're working with here. Then we'll move down to 1080p. But here it is at 4K 60. You can see from Stats for Nerds, this is just going to continuously keep dropping. It's not as bad as I've seen in the past with the desktop OS and this chip, but it's still not perfect. Now, when I move to 1080p, that's when we see really great performance out of this. So my monitor resolution is set at 720 right now, but this is a 1080 60 video. We've got it set at 1080 in YouTube. And by the end of this, I only had one drop frame, which was really impressive. The Manjaro devs have done a great job optimizing for this chip, and the stock operating system that comes on the Pi 800 is known as Orange Pi OS. I wasn't getting nearly this kind of performance out of that one that I am with Manjaro. And since I went through and installed it, I figured we'd take a look at GIMP running here, free photo editing software. In my opinion, it's just as powerful as Photoshop, but it's free. It works with basically every operating system out there. If you've got a Mac, a Windows, or a Linux machine, you can go ahead and download this. I've got a sample image here that we were going to do some basic editing with, but as you can see, even though this is running from a micro SD card, everything's loading up really quickly. And of course, this is just a single layer image. I really wouldn't pick this up for photo editing, but if you needed to touch up some family photos and things like that, then you could get it done with this. I wouldn't go crazy with it with 10 layers and all kinds of different filters running, but basic editing, totally possible on the Orange Pi 800 with Manjaro. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of emulation, and we're going to go with PSP. I was able to get the standalone version of PPSSPP installed. It's the SDL version. OpenGL back in, 1x resolution, not bad, but when you move over to a harder to run game like God of War, it really does fall on its face, even at 1x resolution. So you kind of want to stick with the easier to emulate PSP games, but there was one thing that I ran into with this, no matter what emulator I was using, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but as you can hear, the audio is a little funky, and it's kind of across the board. But when it comes to PSP performance at 1x with that OpenGL back in, not bad at all. This is Tekken 6. It's about a mid-range game to run, so this is about it with the RK3399, and this kind of falls in line with Android or Linux. And the final thing I was able to get up and running was the demo of Quake. So I tried Quake 2, but it was a bit slow. And even with this, as you can hear, we've still got those weird audio issues. But this is running at full speed. And yeah, I'm sure there's other older games that'll work fine on the Pi 800. Uh, with this, I've got some audio buzzing with PSP. I had it cutting out, so hopefully that audio driver or whatever's going on right now is fixed later on. So far, not a bad experience with Manjaro running on the Pi 800. It is early for this unit, but it's not early for the chipset. So, you know, we do have a lot of optimizations for the RK3399. And from what I've tested so far, which is Orange Pi OS, the stock operating system that comes installed on the internal storage, versus Manjaro, I would go with Manjaro every day. But I'm actually really interested in testing out Android on this. Over on their website, they claim they will have Android 12 available for this with Google Play pre-installed. And that might be really appealing and more accessible to some people out there because, you know, everybody knows how to use Android. And basically, instead of using a touchscreen, which I'm sure we could over USB, you'd just be using a mouse and keyboard. I want to see how emulation performs on that. We're also going to be testing out some native Android games. So if you're interested in seeing that video, definitely keep an eye on the channel. And I'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to check out how Orange Pi OS performs on the Pi 800, my first video is linked in the description. We also did kind of a teardown just so we could take a look at the internals in that one. 
And by the way, this is going for $99 over on AliExpress. I think they're going to have an Amazon link up soon, but I will leave them in the description just in case you either want to learn more about this or maybe even pick one up. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Pi 800, just let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.